Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Rethinking Materials. Today, we're going to talk about how to transform single-use items, things that would normally end up in the landfill, into fun art supplies with me, Corinne Loperfito. Each day, the earth births itself anew, using the fallen leaves and fruit from the last season as compost to bring forth fresh blossoms in the spring. We as modern humans have lost respect for these gifts and transformed the eternal bounty into endless consumer products, never stopping to think about the true cost of our actions. Lost in an endless rat race for more money, power, and material goods, we have grown numb to the fact that we are the ones causing all the harm and destruction on the planet in the name of convenience. Buying whatever we want and sending the packaging to the landfill as soon as we're done, we are literally turning our sacred home, our earth, into a garbage dump. I don't actually think that we're going to save the planet by turning all this waste into art supplies, but I do think we can start by changing our way of relating to all of it, not only for ourselves, but also for all living things that call this place home. Think about every can of soda you've ever drank, every jar of peanut butter, every bottle of wine, every old sock, anything you've ever thrown away is still somewhere sitting on someone's land in a landfill poisoning the earth. Now, I know it all seems like a bunch of chaos when it all gets thrown away, but what if some things were actually kept, organized, and given to artists so that they could, using a few simple tools, which I'll talk about in this video, transform them into art. I first got turned on to this idea by an artist named Shrine, pictured here in front of one of his installations, how taking just a simple hammer and nail, you could transform everyday objects like bottle caps into usable materials. So all you have to do is simply take a large nail, get a piece of wood on the bottom so you don't mess up your surface, And voila, you now have a bead. Now imagine if you had a bunch of these things, what you could do with it. Here's a few early examples of work that I made right after I learned about this from Shrine and I started making jewelry with it. Since then, I've gone on for many years to make all kinds of things out of trash, integrating different materials. Here is some rope that I started using from a fellow artist who would save me his rope scraps and taking apart old jewelry. There's so many different ways that we can use what already exists to make new art. Another trick that Shrine taught me is taking a metal top and some big industrial scissors or tin snips. You want to make sure you have something thick for this because it will mess up regular scissors if you try and cut metal with these too much. But whether it's a wine top or an olive oil top, all you do is make a few snips in the metal. You can do more or less depending on the look you're going for. Hammer it out. And then again, pick up your hammer and nail once you're done making the flower and you can put a hole in it. And now there you go. This thing that was intended to be used once and thrown away is now completely possible to be so many different things. So you can see here again what happens when you have a bunch of them. Another thing I like to use is plastic lids. So for this, you're going to need a drill with a small drill bit on it because If you try and use a hammer and nail on plastic, you're just going to shatter the plastic. So really simple. You just put a little hole in it. And then here is an example of a piece I made using only plastic lids. So by using these different techniques with metal and plastic and just three simple tools, you can take some wire and feed it through, layering up these things to make fun compositions. I call these trash flowers. And then I have some wire cutters and some needle nose pliers that I roll over to make this kind of usable thing. Another material that I like to work with are marker caps. Anyone that has kids or works in a school or all different kinds of artists that use these materials know how quickly you end up with a bunch of marker caps. So again, now imagine not one, but a hundred marker caps, what you could do with that. So using the same technique I did for the trash flower, I used some steel wire, bend it over with a needle nose pliers, and now I'm going to turn this marker cap into a bead. After you get the first side done, you snip it, keeping a little bit longer than the side before because as you're rolling around to the open side of the marker cap, you want to roll it all the way inside and then straighten it out. Here's an example of something that I made using all of these different techniques 
putting together all the different markers and also I use some soda can tabs at the end of this and I just love the way it moves. When you look at this, you don't think garbage and that's what I want to share with people here. Here's another example using sewing this time where I was able to use the same technique using another different example of the marker caps. These are some wristbands that I made using some kind of sweatbands that I already had, bottle caps, markers, and bells to make these fun noisemaker wristbands. Final trick I wanna show you with this kind of stuff is a bread tab. So you're gonna to wanna to use a drill again because it's plastic, you don't wanna split it. So once you put a hole in it, then it's not a bread tab anymore, it can be used as something else. Here's an example of a headpiece that I made sewing on a bunch of different things onto a panda mask that I probably got from the thrift store or a free pile, and now it's something much more interesting. Here are some costumes that I made for video art that is featured in the exhibit called Trash Temple, which is now on view at the Meowth location in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So for these videos, I wanted to feature these clown characters and all of the supplies that I used to make these costumes were things that would have ended up in the landfill. So you can see the bottle caps, the plastic. I used some laundry detergent tubs, all different kinds of materials to make these costumes for the videos. In addition to what I just showed you, I also sometimes use cardboard, whether it's a letter or a packaging, a cereal box, or also plastic things like food packaging, packaging material, so many different plastic things. Simply using a staple gun and some cardboard, you can transform things like this as well into decorations or costumes. So for costumes, I like to staple these things to a piece of cardboard as a base. And then after I'm done, I come back through and staple a piece of fabric to the back so that it doesn't scratch my head. And by just using scraps of fabric, it's amazing what you are able to pull off. So see, here it is when you actually put it on. At first glance, you wouldn't think, oh, that's garbage. Here's another thing I made using this same technique of cutting up cardboard and plastic and using a plier stapler and some embroidery floss, I was able to make this cool flower. In addition to using these materials for costumes, using an impact driver and screws, I also turned these things into materials for making installation art. So you can see here, the materials are infinite. The sky's the limit with design. Here's the example of the first thing I ever made and then more recent pictures of an exhibit, as I was saying, called Trash Temple that's on view at Meow Wolf in Santa Fe. I made this in collaboration with an artist named Damon Williams and together through whatever we could find on the ground, in the dumpster, through lots and lots of donations and help from friends, we made this room that has a complete CD ceiling, a bottle cap mosaic floor. It features computer parts and all different kinds of trash, anything that would have otherwise ended up in the landfill. So I hope that through all these examples, you've been able to see the possibilities and potential that exists within quote unquote trash materials from produce bags to soda cans, so many different things that you can use in your creative life to create some kind of wearable thing or some kind of environment, all different kinds of art because there is no such thing as a way. And it is our responsibility as individuals and as artists to reimagine the possibilities and focus on using what already exists on this earth. So thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for more. You can follow me along on my Patreon page, my Instagram and my website, all spelled the same way. So I hope that you will stay in touch and please send me pictures of things that you have made because I would love to see what everybody is doing.